In this section, I'm going to be talking about the product and quotient rules. So first we want to um, play with an example to just think a little bit about how these rules work and more importantly how they don't work. So we're given here um, a function um, f of x equals x to the fourth and another function um, g of x equals x cubed and we want to think about how we would go about finding the derivative of f times g and the derivative of f over g. And we're doing it with these simple functions because we will be able to take their derivatives um, using a little bit of simplification and the rules that we already have to get an idea of um, what this derivative is. So here if I take the derivative of x to the fourth times x cubed, I can simplify that first and say I'm looking at the derivative really of x to the seventh and now I've turned that into a power so I can see that that um, derivative is 7x to the sixth. Notice that if I had tried to just multiply their individual derivatives together, I would have had 4x cubed times 3x squared, which would have given me 12x to the fifth, which is not equivalent to this 7x to the sixth, which I showed was its derivative up here. So note that the derivative of a product is not going to be equal to the product of the derivatives. Because we can see in this example that that would not give us um, the same thing. So this just indicates that our um, rule for the derivative of a product is not going to be so simple as just multiplying those individual derivatives together. So let's also think about what the derivative of a um, quotient might be. If I was looking at the derivative of x to the fourth over x cubed, well I could simplify this as x as long as I remember that this um, equation is not true when x is zero and I could say that that derivative is one as long as x is not zero. But what happens if I try to look at the derivative of x to the fourth over the derivative of x cubed, what is that going to give me? Well, the derivative of x to the fourth I know is 4x cubed and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So if I tried to simplify that, I see that would be 4 thirds x if x is not zero. Where in both cases, um, because I'm dealing with this um, quotient here, the derivative isn't um, defined at zero since the function isn't defined at zero. So I get this derivative of 1 um, if I simplify first, and I get this derivative of 4 thirds x if I try to do the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. So again, we see that these are not equal, so the derivative of a quotient is not equal to the quotient of the derivatives. So these um, two examples are just indicating to us that for both derivatives of products and derivative of quotients, the rule isn't so simple as it was for the derivative of a sum. So I'm going to need some new rules for the derivative of a product and the derivative of a quotient. Okay. So let's first look at the derivative of a product. So we now know that the derivative of f times g is not equal to f prime g prime. So what is it equal to? Well, if we have two functions that are differentiable at x, then the derivative of f times g, <coughs> it turns out, is equal to the derivative of that first function times the second function by itself, plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. So this turns out to be our product rule. Um, we're not going to prove this, but we could prove this um, using the limit definition of the derivative and show that this is how um, this rule would have to work. So one way that I often think about this rule is that when I'm looking at um, a product of two functions, I've got some sort of first function times a second function. So if I want to take the derivative of this, I'm looking at the derivative of something times something else. I think of this as the derivative of the first, d first, 
times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So somehow when you're doing your derivative rule you need to have um, the first function by itself times the derivative of the other function and then that second function by itself times the derivative of the first function. So you need to get the sum of those two different combinations. So we want to look at an example. So here I have f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 2x plus 8 times 5x minus 1. And the reason that we're looking at this is we know that we can do this in two ways. I could um, multiply this all out, get a, a polynomial, and then use um, my derivative rules from earlier where I'm just going to take the derivative of each term. Or now I can also um, find this derivative using the product rule. So we want to do this using both methods and see that we get the same thing. So if I'm going to just use um, the rules that I had before this section, I'm going to have to simplify this first. So I'm going to have to expand. So I'm going to have to multiply 3x squared times 5x. So we're going to get 15x cubed minus 3x squared. Then I'll have plus 10x squared minus 2x plus 40x minus 8, just by multiplying that all through. So by uh, combining my, my like terms here, I've got 15x cubed plus 7x squared. Then I'm going to have plus 38x minus 8. Okay, so that took a little bit of work. So now I can go ahead and do the derivative um, using my earlier rules here. So this is going to be 45x squared plus 14x plus 38. Okay, so we were able to find the derivative that way. What about now finding the derivative using the product rule? So I have this function f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x plus 8 times 5x minus, excuse me, minus 1. So I have, this is my first function and this um, 5x minus 1 is my second function. So when I'm looking at my derivative, I need to do the derivative of that first function, which is 6x plus 2 times the original second function plus now my original first function 3x squared plus 2x plus 8 times the derivative of that second function which is 5. So see how um, this second function stayed the same here but then we have the derivative of the first. Here that um, first function stayed the same and I have the derivative of the second so I have both pieces. Now just to show that I get back what I have, I need to expand this out and collect my terms. So this is going to be 30x squared minus 6x plus 10x minus 2, and then I'm going to have plus 15x squared plus 10x plus 40. So let's see, I've got a 30x squared and a 15x squared, so that's 45x squared. I've got 20x minus 6, so that's 14x and then I have negative 2 and 40 which is 38. So I do get the same thing here. So this is just showing how this product rule um, is what it has to be with this taking the first times the derivative of the, of the second and taking the, the second times the derivative of the first in order to get the same answer as if I multiplied this all out. Okay. So of course here we didn't really have to use the product rule so we also want to look at an example where, where we don't have any method other than the product rule. So here if I wanted to take the derivative of the square root of x times e to the x there would be no way for me to simplify that first. So I have x to the one half times e to the x and I need to take its derivative. Well I'm going to look at this piece as my first function and this piece as my second function. So y prime is going to have to be the derivative of that first function. So that's 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1, so that's negative 1 half, times the original second function, plus, now I have to have my original first function, times the derivative of that second function. Well, the derivative of e to the x in this case is just e to the x. So I can go ahead and simplify this. This is e to the x over 2 times root x plus root x e to the x is what our product rule would give us. Um, notice that when we're doing product rule, if we just have um, a derivative of a product of two things, our derivative will always be a sum of two different things. Um, one thing that we can also see in this example is that the domain of our original function here with root x 
was x greater than or equal to 0, or a domain of 0 to infinity, um, since I can't take the square root of a negative number. And I see when I take the derivative, I end up with an x in the denominator, so I notice that the domain of my derivative happens to be just positive numbers, not including 0. Okay, so let's look at now um, what happens with the quotient rule. Okay, so I'm calling this deriving the quotient rule fun with algebra because we're going to use what we now know about the product rule in order to figure out what the formula needs to be for our quotient rule. So let's say I want to take the derivative of a quotient, so q for quotient here, q of x is equal to some function f over g, um, and notice that this means that if I multiply both sides by g of x, um, which I can do as long as g of x isn't 0, I have f of x equals g of x times q of x. So now I have a product. So I could find f prime of x. f prime of x would be equal to, let's see, g prime of x times q of x, the derivative of that first function times the second, plus the second uh, let's see, the first function, regular first function, times the derivative of that second function. Okay. Now my goal is to find q prime of x. Okay, I want to be able to find the derivative of a quotient in terms of f and g. So q prime has showed up here, so I want to try to solve this for q prime. So I've got g of x, q prime of x, equals f prime of x, um, let's see, minus g prime of x, q of x, and then I could divide both sides by that g of x, so I'll have q prime of x is f prime of x minus g prime of x, q of x, all over g of x. So this is getting pretty close to our quotient rule, but notice that I still have q of x in here, where q of x is equal to f over g, and I'd like the final um, formula for my quotient rule to just have to do with, with f and g. So I want to replace q of x there with f of x over g of x. And then I'm just going to have to use a little bit of algebra to simplify this. So now I've got a fraction um, in the top, and if I want to add f prime of x to um, negative g prime of x, f of x over g of x, I'm going to need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply f prime of x by g of x over g of x. So this is going to give me g of x, f prime of x, minus g prime of x, f of x. Notice that will be all over g of x. So I'm going to have something all over g of x divided by g of x. So that will end up simplifying to this being all over g of x squared. So using the product rule and a little bit of algebra, we were just able to figure out what the quotient rule says. So let's go to the next slide here and we'll see this rule written out nicely for us. So this rule says that if we have f and g being differentiable functions at x, then the derivative of the quotient f over g at x exists provided g of x is not 0 and is given by the following. This is the derivative of f over g is equal to g of x times f prime of x, so the bottom function, times the derivative of the top function, minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function, all over that bottom function squared. So you can see that's exactly what we had here. We had g of x times f prime of x minus g prime of x times f of x all over g of x squared. So there's a few different ways, um, little mnemonic devices and things for remembering this rule. The way I always think about it is that I've got a derivative of top over bottom, and I'm always thinking I need to have the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. That's what I'm always thinking about when I do one of these derivatives. But there's lots of other little ways of thinking about it. You can think of this as the derivative of high over low, where you're looking at low d high minus high d low all over low low. 
or you could even think of this as one one little song that goes with this is that it's low d high minus high d low um, square the bottom and away we go <laughs> so remembering that you need to square that bottom term there's also even d high over ho where we have ho d high minus high d ho all over ho ho like Santa okay so there's lots of little devices for remembering this we've proved it from the product rule um, we've got this algebraic form and you can also have these different little things that you say to yourself while you're using this rule to help you remember it so we just want to do one example where we apply this quotient rule Okay. So here I have h of x is x squared minus 2 all over 2x plus 1. So it's like this is my f of x and this is my g of x in that formula. Or this is my top function and my bottom function. Or high over low or high over ho, however you want to remember this. So when I go do my derivative, I think of always starting with the bottom function. 2x plus 1 to make sure that I get the order right and get the right um, pair of terms negative. So I've got that bottom function times the derivative of the top function. So the derivative of x squared minus 2. So we'll just write this out like this here to, to help us in this particular example. So I've got 2x plus 1 times the derivative of the top minus that top function times the derivative of 2x plus 1 all over that bottom function squared. Now you might not always write this d dx of this, you'll probably do that in your head, but this is just to emphasize that it's this bottom function, derivative of the top, top, derivative of bottom. So let's say I had bottom times derivative of top, that's 2x minus the top function here times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2, all over that bottom function squared. So we can just simplify this a little bit. We've got 4x squared plus 2x minus 2x squared plus 4 all over 2x plus 1 squared. So this gives us 2x squared plus 2x plus 4 all over 2x plus 1 squared is um, the derivative of our function h. Okay. So please let me know if you have any questions on any of this material so far. We'll be doing more practice and um, applications of the product and quotient rule next time.